Hi, this is Brendan with QSAC Prep, and in this video we're going to be discussing ellipsis and how you can graph an ellipse from its equation. So what we can see up here is we have the general form for an ellipse. You may be familiar with it from your course. And we're just going to talk about what each of these letters means. x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now, the center of an ellipse is given by the points h comma k and a and b are used to help you figure out what your major axis is, what your minor axis is, and how you can graph an ellipse. So probably easiest just to go through an example. So the example that I'm going to provide you with is x plus 2 squared over 9 plus y minus 3 squared over 16 is equal to 1. So we've already mentioned that the center is going to be h comma k. Notice this is x minus h squared, and down here this is x plus 2 squared. The sign is different. So h must be the point negative 2 so that x minus h or x minus negative 2 would lead us to x plus 2 k must be 3 because y minus 3, y minus k, the k and the 3 just align perfectly. So we know that the center of our graph is going to be at the point negative 2, 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just plot the center right there. Now, as far as the next key points, we have to figure out our vertices and our co-vertices, and this can always create a lot of confusion among students. The vertices are always going to relate to whichever number is larger in the denominators here. It's not the first term, it's not the second term, it's not what's with x or with what or what's with y. Rather, it's where the larger value is, and that's really important to stress. Here, the larger value is below the y, meaning this 16 uh, tells us something. Now notice up here this is b squared. So b then, if, if b squared is 16, b must equal 4. So I'm going to write that down here. b squared equals 16, b is equal to 4. Now since this number is under our y ver our coordinate, that means that it's our y value of our center that's going to change as we go to find the vertices. So the vertices in this case, right them here, are going to change the y coordinate by 4. So the x coordinate is going to remain the same. We're going to have negative 2. We're going to go down 4 from 3. 3 minus 4 is going to be negative 1. And we're going to go up 4 from 3. 3 plus 4 is going to be 7. So our vertices are going to be the points negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2, 7. Just going up 4 units and down 4 units because the 16 is under the y. For the x, we're going to be going left and right, because that's what we normally do with x coordinates. They move us along the horizontal. And we're going to be going left and right 3 units, because the square root of 9 is 3. So notice a squared is equal to 9. So then a must equal 3. Some teachers call these points vertices. I think most are going to call them covertices. And that's because they're along the minor axis. So if I go left 3 units from the center, which is the point negative 2, 3, I would end up at negative 5, comma 3. If I go right 3 units from negative 2, 3, I would end up at the point 1, comma 3. So my covertices are going to be here and here. Now, because the way that I've drawn the scale, unfortunately, this is going to look a little bit more like a circle than it is an ellipse, but just know that the scale is off. So what we can do is we can go ahead and connect all these points, and very difficult to draw a perfect circle here, or perfect ellipse, and our shape's going to end up looking something like this. Now, it should be stretched a little bit more in the x direction than the y. Uh, if the scale had been a little bit more clean, that would be easy to see. Finally, we have one other important point that we have to find, and that's our foci. Now, to find the foci, we use this value c squared, 
And sometimes it's written as a squared minus b squared, sometimes it's b squared minus a squared, but what I really want you to take away is it's always the larger of these two denominator values minus the smaller. So here it's going to be 16 minus 9. That's going to lead us to 7. Well, if c squared is equal to 7, then c must be the square root of 7. Now, when finding the foci, we change the same coordinate that we changed when finding the vertices. So we're going to change the coordinate that has the larger value under it. So once again, the larger value, 16, is below the y-coordinate. So as I look to fill in my foci, it's my y-coordinate that needs to change from my center. My x-coordinate remains the same in negative 2, but my y-coordinate is going to go up by this c-value, which is the square root of 7, and it's also going to go down by this c-value, which is the square root of 7. Square root of 7 is somewhere between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, so it's somewhere between 2 and 3. And since it's our y value that's changing, we're going to plot something somewhere between 2 and 3 above the center, and somewhere between 2 and 3 below the center. Now the importance of the foci is that every point on the ellipse is an equal distance from the foci. That's how an ellipse is defined. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.